I'm Jordan from um, Nautico, Iberia, and uh, yeah, I guess I should give a little bit of an introduction, um, and then I can get into a few housekeeping things. But uh, yeah, our, our company works uh, in location-based technology. We're based in Barcelona, and you can, I think, see the Agbar Tower back there. It's a little bright. Um, but, but yeah, we're, we're, we, we're based in Barcelona. We've got a, a headquarters in Paris. Um, and we have a shopping app that works with beacons and geofencing, uh, as well as an SDK to integrate into other apps that lets you send messages or take actions with, with uh, geofencing and um, beacons as well. Um, and we do proximity consulting. And uh, yeah, so the goal for us is to make setting up beacon and geofencing interactions as, as easy as possible keeping it simple. So we see these webinars as a way to provide case studies and ideas to help you think through what your beacon or geofence project will look like. Uh, so hopefully that's a good intro to us. If you have any questions about us, just let me know. You can check out our website. Just type in here. Beacons.com. Um, yeah, so as far as housekeeping, um, I think there's a couple other people that are joining us. You can try the YouTube video if there's a little bit of a delay here. Um, I sent it into, into the chat bar. Um, if, um, I would keep this, this open too, though, uh, because you can chat with me here, um, and others can see your messages too. Um, I will have a FAQ at the end, so if you have any questions, I'll try to get to it uh, during the webinar. But if not, um, there'll be some time at the end too. And oh yes, if there are links, I will. You can just send, shoot me an email if you need, if you need the link again. But uh, this this site does delete like after maybe fifteen messages, it'll delete the links. So snag them now, or, or just remind me to shoot you an email afterwards. So I think that's it, except for the SlideShare link. Yeah, so you can follow along via SlideShare. Okay, let me pop open the SlideShare now. There we are. Beacons for Taurus. Okay. Um, yeah. So before I dig into just give you or give you guys a brief intro to beacons in general, um, whether you're representing a store here or a museum or a tour agency, yeah, I, I really think beacons can help engage engage Taurus specifically. Um, I actually uh, did a, my, my master's thesis was designing an app, like a tour app. Um, so I think it's a really great, great audience to, to engage um, in part because they don't necessarily have 3G or Wi-Fi and so they can be reached via beacons. Go into a little more details later, but just so we're all on the same page um, about beacons, I think you're able to see the screen, yeah. So you should be seeing the screen about beacons now. Um, yeah, we, we do have a, uh, a monthly webinar uh, that goes more in depth in, into Beacons and how to set up campaigns and you can even see what our software looks like. Um, but today I just wanted to just give two or three minutes just so everyone has the broad picture and maybe there's a couple tips for, for people who know a lot about Beacons already that, that you can use too. Um, so beacons are small devices. I have one here. You can see it there, uh, but just to give you an idea of um, what they look like. Oh, again. Uh, yeah, so pretty tiny. Uh, this is Estimo. There's a lot of other good manufacturers out there, uh, but roughly, roughly this size. Um, back to the screen. Um, yeah, they can be, you know, just a few dollars. Um, I've seen them for five dollars with batteries lasting a few weeks, mostly for events, and I've seen them for you know thirty, thirty-five, forty dollars with longer range and a better better power system and different add-ons and, and things. Um, so the, they use a Bluetooth Low Energy BLE, and these this BLE emitter can go into small devices and continuously emit for years because it takes you know the Bluetooth Low Energy it doesn't take much energy. So having uh, relatively cheap devices um, that you can also, you know, have, you have the flexibility, flexibility to place all over uh, your store, your museum, your, your hotel um, can be fantastic. Um, 
And actually, I wanted to send you a link as far as choosing hardware, because I like Estimote, um, but there's some other good hardware manufacturers out there, so you can use this link to, to choose the right hardware for you. Um, yeah, so I think that's just the basics. Um, I should also mention that they usually work with an app, uh, and they have a broad range of uses with apps, so like a lot of airport apps will use them to help people navigate to, to their gates. Uh, museums will use them for helping the visually impaired, stores use, use them for pushing uh, flash sales, etc. Um, and two of the things I wanted to mention, one, beacons do not collect data. That's a common misconception. Uh, they just send information, they just send an identifier that pulls up information on the phone. Um, so an app can use this uh, identifying signal to know where and when um, this particular user was. Um, but if but a user's privacy is not really at risk if they can trust the app and how they're using the data. Uh, and one other question that we usually get is, well, how many people actually have Bluetooth on anyway? Um, and the answer to that is it depends. Uh, partly on your location in the world, what devices you're targeting, um, your audience's age, etc. Um, it depends also a large part on you, you know, what, what you're doing with Bluetooth, uh, the added value that you're offering uh, for users to turn Bluetooth on, um, and how you're getting them to turn it on too. Um, so for example, a museum app that has a guide that works only with Bluetooth um, will have a lot more people using it using the Bluetooth um, than um, a retail app that just sends a lot of push notifications about, about deals. Um, but yeah, in any case, uh, it's best to test for yourself. And just to get a general idea, there were two pretty major studies in the US showing that between 40 and 50% of Bluetooth work campaigns were received. But really, it's, it's good to test for yourself and to get, to get some um, better idea about what your specific audience will do uh, with a Bluetooth enabled app. Um, and there is actually some other good news too, um, because leaving Bluetooth on all day only drains a few percentage uh, points from phones, you know, significantly less than GPS and Wi-Fi. So hopefully more and more people uh, will see this um, and yeah, see that there's more and more benefits to having a Bluetooth turned on, more and more apps are using BOE. Um, so yeah, hopefully we see an increase in that general 40 to 50%. And again, for people just joining us, if you do have any questions, there should be a chat bar uh, to the side here. Um, and if there is there there is a bit of a delay uh, on this platform, so if you want to open up YouTube too, uh, there should, the, the delay should be a little bit less. Okay, so hopefully everyone has a good idea about beacons. So on to beacons for tours specifically. Nope. Nope, that's not what I wanted to do. So as I was saying, um, a lot of tourists don't have Wi-Fi or 3G all the time. Sometimes I don't even have G uh, GPS turned on because they want to save their batteries because they're not going to their hotel or whatever for a while. Um, so beacons with a helpful reminder via sign to turn Bluetooth on um, or a notification, you know, um, can be a great way to, to reach them at the right time and place. So I'll go through some case studies here about retail, um, you know, historical sites, parks, city tours, hotels uh, giving some ideas and hopefully some, uh, some inspiration. Um, and again, at the end, there'll be, there'll be an FAQ. And uh, one thing, uh, one thing uh, to keep in mind too is that beacons can be used for multiple purposes. So if you're a hotel, you might want to take an idea from what museums are doing or vice versa. And the same beacon can serve you for both purposes. So we'll start with beacon for retail locations. And I mean, maybe if, if you're representing a hotel, um, you have a shop in your hotel, or same goes for, for museums. Um, and if you're a store, then yeah, you know all about retail locations and the, the different needs that you have and that beacons can solve. Um, but if you have a shop in a particularly touristy area, um, they can really help you reach people uh, nearby. 
Um, so maybe when they walk, walk by your shop, you can send them messages or you can um, send them when they're nearby via, via GPS if they have, have GPS on uh, to come into your shop and then once they're in there, you send them a message um, or you can you know, set up your store. Sorry about that, hopefully you're hearing me okay now. The Wi-Fi here is not fantastic. It's not as good as it should be for a software company at least. Uh, yeah, I'm really sorry. Um, let me pop up where it was. Um, yeah, sorry, sorry, let me go. Yeah, it's hopefully it's okay now. Um, yeah, I just had a little bit of an internet trouble there. So I think hopefully uh, I may have been going on there for a few seconds, but I think we were at City Tours. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I'll just stick with City Tours. Um, so if you are a city planner or connected to other museums, for example, um, you can um, connect uh, to different sites. Um, maybe and coordinate some type of um, tour. So the, there's a project, for example, in the entire city of Piacenza, Italy, that was launched by the city government. Um, and there's a similar project in Germany. They're focused more on the visually impaired, organized by a marketing agency. Um, and if, if you're a brand, this could be a good idea too. Heineken in New Zealand, a couple of weeks ago, started offering rewards, uh, $50,000 worth of them. Um, that are unlocked when people go nearby beacons that they have set up around uh, different cities and in their Heineken locations. So um, yeah, it's not a bad time to visit New Zealand if you're interested in beacon rewards. So next up, um, welcoming people to the city. Um, yeah, so just briefly on this, because um, we don't have too much time left here. Um, so for the Mobile War Congress here in Barcelona, Beacons greeted people at the airport. Um, so this could be a great way if you're a city, if you're an airport, if you're representing a train station, um, way to welcome people into the city and offer them different directions. Uh, or if you, even if you have an event or tour, uh, you can welcome someone into the city. Uh, you can help know the traffic flow, know who's coming in. Um, and yeah, um, maybe even send them um, a survey or something when they leave too. So they can really help people like from when they, as soon as they get to the city, all the way to the end. And last up, uh, beacons for hotels. Um, this is an interesting one because there's a lot of things you can do, hotels can do, a lot of different ways to engage people. Um, so guests can, I mean, there, yeah, there's a lot of different data. Proxy Hotel is just one example of a company that works with uh, data and helps helps hotels collect and use the data. Um, but there's a lot of cool things hotels can do beyond just data. Um, guests can gain entry uh, to their rooms via beacons, like at the W, um, or be greeted with welcoming messages at the, you know, check in and check out, um, or even just check in and check out when they're in the lobby at the right time. Um, you can even let them use Bluetooth on their phones to control temperature or light in the rooms. Some beacons can connect um, to lights and um, different things in, in the rooms themselves. Um, and yeah, you can use them for your staff too. Um, for example, beacons can alert a housekeeping staff to service a room when the guest is out or not to serve a guest when, when they're in the room too. Um, yeah, uh, I guess one last thing is if your museum or hotel um, has, a, has a restaurant, uh, could be a really good way to, to engage people too, um, to send them uh, the menus, let them pay, uh, a lot of different things restaurants can do too. So uh, just to conclude here, uh, a couple bonus tips. Um, I mentioned having an exit survey before. Uh, this, this is really great um, for if someone is leaving your store, your hotel, your city, um, it's a great way uh, to offer them rewards for answering um, um, and getting them back uh, another time. Um, so it's going to be really a good, powerful tool for, for engagement, you know, making sure that you, know, you, you stay connected with them after their visit and getting feedback. 
Uh, you can also let people know what events are going on nearby with Beacons. Um, so I mentioned this before too, uh, but it's a great uh, real-time way uh, to, to use Beacons. Um, you can use them at events pretty effectively too, if you're a museum, store, city, hotel, etc. We actually had a webinar last month about this vertical. If you're interested, I can send you, send you a link on this too. Um, but if you do have events going on, like, like zoos might or, or museums might, it's a great way to, to notify people to say, hey, you know, like an hour away from now, um, there's going to be this really great event. Come on in. Um, yeah, so that's a good way to engage, engage, engage tourists who may not, you know, know what's, what's going on nearby. Um, you can also be notified about VIP clients entering. So if you're a museum, um, your, your members, you might want to know if, if they're coming in, when they're coming, how long they stay there. Uh, maybe if you're a hotel, you know, you're frequent visitors, obviously you want to know when they're there. Maybe you want to have um, your staff give them a special greeting. Um, or if you're a store, yeah, maybe you want to offer your VIP, VIP clients a special deal or have your, your employees greet someone specifically by name. So it's, so knowing when your VIP clients are entering is a really good way to use beacons too. Um, and finally, I want to say pay attention to analytics. Think about what data you'll collect, how your users know about what data you'll collect, and then um, how you'll use uh, this, this data uh, before you purchase your beacons because the beacons can, yeah, the data that you can collect with beacons um, depends on what beacons you're using in part. Um, so people spend a lot of time figuring out the messages um, where, and then choosing the beacon placements and then they forget to have an analytic strategy in place beforehand. Um, so think about the, the data too. Maybe you don't want to use beacons for data at all, you just want to send messages, you just want to help people with indoor mapping, which I think is fantastic, uh, but think about that in advance. Um, and if, if you think maybe in the future you use them to collect data too. Uh, because, you know, moving your beacons around um, isn't the easiest. I mean, it's they're pretty light, uh, pretty you know flexible as far as moving, but yeah, it's a pain to to set them up all over again. Um, that's all. Uh, I really do think beacons can help engage tourists from the start of their trip to the end. And uh, before we get to you know, if there's any questions. Um, I just wanted to mention that we do offer free consultations. If you're interested, uh, we'd love to hear about your beacon ideas and see where we can help. I'll send a link, and this will be in your email as well. Let's pull up the message here. Yeah, um, that's all I have. Feel free to keep in touch on Twitter uh, via email. Send me that link. I'll be on the line uh, for a couple more minutes for questions. Um, otherwise, uh, it was great to, to share a bit here about the different verticals that uh, can, can use beacons to connect with tourists. Hopefully there's some good ideas. Um, and like I said, beacons can be used for a lot of different things, the same beacon. Um, so maybe some of the ideas for you know, hotels might help, help your museum. Um, so hopefully there's some good, uh, good nuggets for everyone. Yeah, so I'll be on the line via chat. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, it's been a pleasure.